Good morning, everyone. And though it's a few days early, happy St. Patrick's Day. It'll be on Friday, so I, you know, you, when you invest in lovely attire such as this tie, you have to wear it every chance you get. And I won't be having it on the whole service, so those of you that are concerned about that. But will you join me and let's stand as we begin our service this morning, uh, singing the song, Come Now is the Time to Worship, because this is the time to worship. You know, we've done all kinds of things this morning. Did any of you eat breakfast? Did any of you get dressed? Yeah. Any of you brush your teeth? All right. Now we come together as a body of believers in Jesus Christ to worship our great God. Are you ready for that? All right, let's start. Um, oh, sorry, I said it too early. Sorry. Edit that out, will you, Jeannie? Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to live your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. as you are before your God. Uh, one day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you. Up this nice cool morning. <clears throat> I'll wake you up 
today. Um, before I forget, uh, please pass the red <coughs> books at the end of your aisles, rows <coughs> to the side, and sign in. And if you uh, have any prayer requests, be sure and put that in the offering plate uh, and note whether it's public or private. And if you're visiting, uh, please fill out this little attachment to the bulletin too and, and put that in the offering plate. Um, <clears throat> this morning I was kind of reminded of seeing all the kids here on the front row and, and I had the pleasure of spending a little time with Lucas Neese this, this week when uh, he's been in his last day with me a little bit and, and it just reminded him he's always asking questions so inquisitive. What's this? What's that? Is this this? Is this that? You know, and just just like a sponge just absorbing things and it, and it made me think, you know, what are we sharing with our kids? And, and uh, help me remember uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall speak of them as you sit in your house, as you walk by the way, as you lie down, as you rise. And you shall bind them as a sign upon your hands. And these shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And it's like just every move we make, every word we say in front of our children are so important. And, you know, we need to make sure that, that what we feed them is God's Word in our lives. So, um, thank you kids for being a part this morning. We appreciate that. And we appreciate your parents, too, that have helped them learn God's words here today. So, um, <clears throat> are there any announcements that need to be made? Other than potluck following, can I, what? Can I remind you about pictures? Pictures. Please do. All righty. We had a lot of new faces in the church and, and that, and uh, it's always nice to know who you're greeting each morning. And so what we've decided to do is, is to do a directory <laughs> and place pictures of each family so you can help identify who, who everybody is. And we're going to start taking pictures today. And what we're thinking about doing is up in the prayer chapel, up on the second floor, on that far end, there's a room. And we'll, we'll set up. And if you're not going to stick around for potluck, I'm going to try to catch you before you leave. Okay? Also, if you've got a lot of little kids in your family that maybe enjoy potluck a little more than the others, you know, by getting food on their selves and stuff. If we can get you before potluck, that might be a plus too. But uh, if you would stop up, have your picture taken so Jamie can put it in the, uh, in the church directory that she's getting ready to compile, it would be a big plus for everybody. And, that. and it, we know we're not going to catch everybody today, so maybe we'll try it again next week as well. And if you have somebody that's a shut-in that's a member of our church, you know, let us know, and, and we can we can make a trip to wherever to get their picture taken, so they're included as well. Alrighty. Thanks, Jim. Mm -hmm. Anything else? If not, let's stand and greet each other with the right hand of fellowship.
The ushers will please come forward. Let's bow for prayer. Father, we just come before you now, and Lord, we have so much to be grateful for, and we thank you for uh, the kids that are here today and just uh, for your desire for them uh, to learn more about you, and, and just pray that you uh, bless this time today and bless the offering now uh, that we are uh, taking here that would bring glory and honor to your name and how we use it. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. Yeah, you spread it out. 
is our prayer song. Now if we'd all stand together, we'll join our hearts in singing our hymn of worship, the Servant Song. together this morning and to come before you uh, in prayer. Uh, we lift to you the many people from our congregation that are away today. Some are traveling and ask that your hand would be upon them. We thank you for the many visitors that are here this morning and we ask that you would bless them and help them to feel as welcomed as they are. Father, we pray too for those that are sick from our congregation. We raise them to you and ask that your hand would be upon them. Give them comfort this day. We specifically list, lift, lift to you um, Jim Geyer, uh, who is dealing with cancer. He's the brother-in-law of Doug and Patty Adams, Lord. And Father, God, we know that you are the great physician, uh, that when doctors don't have the answers and we don't have the answers, um, we know that you are still in control and you work wonderfully, Lord. And we lift Jim up to you this morning, praying, Lord, uh, that you would work in his situation for your glory. And we pray that you continue to be with us, Lord. Uh, each of us have unspoken requests, those that we've kept to ourselves this morning, some are needs, and many are praises, Lord. And this morning, we just take the moment to thank you, God, for who you are, for what you do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. And at this time, we're going to do our we're going to do a prayer for the people going to Nicaragua. So beat it, Jerry. <laughs> Unless you want to go to Nicaragua. No, okay. no, 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 it's okay. At this time, Delmer and Sharon are going to come. And Delmer's going to say just a word. And we're going to have Lee and Karen are here. Uh, they're going. And Greg White. Anybody that's going to Nicaragua, please come down here so we can pray for you. Um, this morning I'd like to read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. 
Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Well, this is a little bit hard because Orlando and Delmer got together and we planned maybe we built 50 churches. And now it's going to be turned over to me, my son, and Noemi Alegria, Orlando's daughter. And hopefully they'll be building 50 churches. It's a lot of work, maybe a bit of time. Uh, well, we have some Spanish Bibles down here for you to be taking with you. And uh, what was I going to say? I would like for I would like for this church to be praying for this group of 14 people that's going down there. They'll be leaving from this church at six o'clock next Sunday morning, and they'll be down there for how many days? Nine. Nine days. And uh, we'll be praying for you. And I'm, I'm asking the church to be praying for this group. And uh, we'll pray that. And you will be ambassadors of, I want you to be ambassadors of God. And you'll have a lot of children around you. You had some children up here, but it's nothing like what you're going to see down there. And those, all those children and all those people down there, I want you to take the love of God down there with you. Because God loves them and they love you. If you take the love of God down there, you'll be doing what God wants you to do. Now, there's one thing that I'm going to tell the church. Is that, is that all right if I tell the church? When you get ready to leave that airplane, had a hard time getting off that runway. It gets clear down the end before it leaves the runway. <laughs> and for a long time, it took a while for, for we to figure out what was wrong with the airplane. But the problem is with the airplane, there's so much love of those people pulling on airplane to keep you down there, it's going to be hard for that plane to get up. So, I mean, if you go off in the, run, in the runway, well, that's Lord's work. But I don't know. Just please, please, take care of yourself, and please take the love of God with you. It doesn't make any difference whether you get the roof on that church or not. But if you get down there and help them, that's all you need to do, is be there with them. Somebody in the United States cares for those people. This church cares for those people in Nicaragua. That's all. That's all. That's what you have. That is. Okay. Also, in a special demonstration, which will go along <coughs> with our message this morning, if you've looked at the notes uh, for the sermon, the title of the sermon is The Towel and the Basin, as we consider the acts of Jesus and, and get ready for Easter. Uh, this morning, in a special act of our love for uh, Delmar Lee, Partners in Christ, we're going to have a foot washing. Uh, you're okay. And it's, <laughs> we're going to, Lee is now the president of Delmar Lee, and so he has agreed to let us uh, do a foot washing for him, and then we're going to have a prayer for these three, but including all 14 uh, that are going. So...
said it was dangerous giving Delmer the microphone, but I took it. I think of how poignant this is that Lee's feet will be in Nicaragua, walking on that ground, doing God's work down there. And um, this is just a blessed thing to see that our church is supporting them and praying for them. And thank you, Pastor Matthew and Lee, both for the foot washing. Bless you both. I'll have Delmer, you'll stand. You stand by Lee, your son. I'll stand by Greg and Sharon. You'll stand by Karen, your daughter-in-law. And if I could have you all stand with us. And I know you don't want to raise your hand, but why don't you grab the hand of the person next to you. And again, we're going to pray for these, these that are going. And these are three of the 14 that are going. And uh, they go representing Del Mar, Lee Partners in Christ, but also First Baptist Church. Uh, because I know that you know, I know that you know that God loves the people of Clay Center, but he also loves the people of Nicaragua. And as they go, they go in our place. Uh, but let's lift them to the Lord. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and to lift up these 14 uh, from our community that are being traveling to Nicaragua. Lord God, we pray for your hand to be upon them, that you would protect them, that you would guide them, uh, that you would help them to be a blessing, Lord, as they share the love of Jesus with these people, with their sweat, with their laughter, with their tears, with their strength, with all that they have. We thank you for Delmer and his testimony of faith. We thank you for Sharon and her testimony of faith and their love for Delmar Lee. And we thank you for Lee and Karen and the leadership that they have in that organization now. And we pray that you would bless it in a mighty way, that you would use them uh, in ways that bring you glory. We pray that you would prepare hearts and minds, even now, for them as they prepare to go. And Lord, we just give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now, now if Jerry will come. Do you want to present the Bibles? As Jerry comes, they're going to present the Bibles. And the choir is going to sing, He Looked Beyond My Faults. <coughs>
see. All right. Well, thank you, choir, for singing. Thank you, Harlan, for singing a solo. All right. Now, looking out, I know normally at this time we dismiss a certain group of people, but I am not aware that we have those people that are supposed to lead that today. But Susan said she would do it if someone would help her. So Yvonne's helping her? Oh, everybody say thank you, Susan and Yvonne. <laughs> At this time, the children will be dismissed for Children's Church with Miss Susan and Miss Yvonne. And I apologize that... All in favor of Miss Susan and Miss Yvonne being church member of the month, say aye. Aye. <laughs> if you oppose, well, guess what you're going to do. No. Oh. Well, in just a moment, we're going to read our passage of Scripture, uh, which is John chapter 13, which deals with uh, the foot washing. And I, I know it's, it's, you know it's always one of those things when we talk about foot washing, people either go, oh, or they go, oh. <laughs> you know? People get really squeamish. And uh, How many of you don't like feet? Oh, see? So, all right, I've taken down all your names, and next time we do foot washing, you'll be at the beginning of the list. <laughs> you won't know we're going to do it. Because my wife always said, and I love my wife, but she always says, if you do a foot washing service, I won't be there. So, so if the pastor's wife won't show up for a service, oh, that's okay. All right. Well, last week we began a, a series, our Lenten series, looking at Judas and his 30 pieces of silver. And you'll remember we took it backwards. Uh, we started with the third point and then moved to the second and the first. And we saw that he was bereaved, that he was grieving. Uh, Judas wasn't. He was bereaved because of his betrayal of Jesus. And we saw that his betrayal of Jesus was a result of a bargain. You'll remember that he sold out Jesus. And you'll recall that the 30 pieces of silver was the same price that they would give for the death of a slave. All right? He sold them out. And so we also stop and reflect as we did, we recorded or, or, or shared the first from Genesis chapter 50. And reminded ourselves that what the world meant for evil, God meant for good. All right? And after looking at the betrayal, his selling out Jesus, we considered, do we do the same thing? Do we betray Jesus? Do we sell out Jesus? Do we uh, give a bargain? Do we sacrifice our relationship with Christ, our time with Christ for other things? Today, we continue in our Lenten series and we look at the towel in the basin. Not a fancy thing down there, but it serves its purpose. As Baptists, of course, we recognize two ordinances, and some of you say, thankfully, uh, baptism, believer's baptism, and communion. Other denominations add foot washing. And if you've never had or participated in a foot washing service, it really can be quite meaningful. Um, it's, it's really very interesting, um, it's very humbling, uh, and it can, can be very, very special. So, you know, don't be too, you know, put off by the idea, because it's really a humbling experience, both for the person washing the foot, the foot or feet, and the person that's having their feet washed. Um, this passage, though, that we look at this morning, it explores uh, this idea, though. And today we're going to look at John 13. Uh, in a minute we're going to read it. But John, you know, remember last week we read from the Gospel of Matthew and he emphasized Jesus as, as king. Today we look at John and John emphasizes Jesus as the Son of God. And even in our passage that we're going to read in just a second, uh, we can see glimpses of this because Jesus mentions uh, the fact that it is the result of his actions that bring us into unity with him. So if you'll stand as you are able as we read John chapter 13, and I'm going to read, it sounds like a long passage, but it's really not that long. John chapter 13, verses 1 
uh, to 17. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel, and girded himself. And just pause for a moment there. Uh, you'll be thankful that I didn't lay aside my garments when I washed Lee's feet. <laughs> I'm grateful. All right. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. Verse 12. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the fact that it is truth. We thank you for its power. We thank you for each one that is here. And Father God, we ask that you would be present, that you would speak to our hearts and challenge us and encourage us this day for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. You may be seated. For this morning's message, we're going to look at the latter part of those verses, verses 15, 16, and 17 in particular. And we'll see three things as we look at them. And today we're going to go in the proper order instead of working backwards. All right. <laughs> We're going to see one that Jesus states his example in verse 15. Jesus specifies his example in verse 16. And Jesus says that there is a blessing when one satisfies his example in verse 17. So we get started looking at that verse 15. Jesus states his example. Now, you know, life, and, you know, maybe you don't know this yet, but life is not always easy. Have you figured that out yet, Kimberly? Yes. Life is not always easy. Sometimes in life we are forced to make decisions. We are forced to try to discern things, to try to determine, determine things. And sometimes we don't know what to do. Have you ever been there? Yeah. But there are other times in life when things are a little bit easier. When people do give us some instructions. When they tell us what to do. Now we normally think we don't like to be told what to do. But it happens an awful lot. Like in school, teachers say, this is your homework. Now, of course, we'd like to be able to be the ones to determine what our homework is because then we would never give ourselves homework. But then we would never really learn the principles that they want us to learn, would we? So the teacher says, go home and do these assignments, these problems. So what? So you will learn. At work, the boss says, I want you to accomplish this or that goal. In society, the law says the speed limit out on Broughton Highway is 55 miles. Did I say it right? Yay! It's 55 miles per hour. Now, sometimes we don't like the instructions, but we cannot deny that it is easier when we are given the instructions. And our passage this morning, in it, we see just this. Jesus is giving us an instruction in the form of an example. And I want us to start by pointing out that fact that Jesus states he is giving an example. Verse 15, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Now, 
I just mentioned that it is easier for us when we're given instructions. But have you ever had somebody say something to you, uh, but you didn't know they meant it as an instruction? <laughs> you know, sometimes somebody in authority might say, maybe you should try this. Or they might say something like, it, it might be a good idea to try that. And then later on they come and come to you and say, well, how did that go? And you go, oh, I didn't, I didn't know you were telling me that that's what you want to do. You said maybe, you know. Sometimes we're a little bit too passive when we, we want to give an instruction. But aren't we glad that Jesus didn't make that mistake? Because statements like that can be confusing and it can lead to disappointment, not just on our part, but whoever has made the statements. Jesus didn't make that mistake. But made that mistake. Here he is very clear. He is very plain. He is very straightforward. He says, I have given you an example. Now, we know what an example is. But let me give you just, let me spend just a, a second on it. Because as we look at this passage of scripture, we ought to sit up and we ought to pay attention. Because that is the goal of Jesus making that statement. He didn't just willy-nilly say it. He didn't just have nothing else to do. So I'll just add a couple words to fill out this page on the Bible. An example. Now in both the English and the Greek, an example is a model or a pattern. But it's more than just a model or a pattern. It's a model or a pattern that is meant to be copied. That is meant to be imitated. And again, Jesus says, I have given you an example. Why? That you should do as I have done to you. How many times, how many of us have asked God, please tell me what to do? Jesus, give me some direction. Spirit, what is your will? This morning, take note. Because Jesus is saying, I have given you an example. He is saying, I'm telling you exactly what to do. He's saying, here's the pattern, folks. Here's the modern model. He's saying, here it is. Now do it. Now do it. So he starts, and we see in verse 15, this idea of him stating an example. He's saying, I'm giving you an example. Now 16, verse 16, he specifies his example. His example. He clarifies his example for us. Verse 16, most assuredly I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor he who is sent is, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. Now Jesus is essentially saying, if I'm not too good to do this, you're not too good to do this. And while he was speaking to the disciples, he speaks uh, to us today. If Christ can do it, so too can we. And we certainly can. You know, and there, there have been times probably in each of our lives when we've seen somebody or thought somebody and thought, well, I'm too good to do that. Have you ever thought about that? I'm too good to have to do that. I'm too good to have to do this. I'm too important to have to do this. You know, as a pastor, it, it is always amazing the number of things that you are called upon to do. Things that they never teach you in Bible, or in, um, in, um, Bible college or seminary, you know. The times when you, you go into a bathroom and, you know, you have to clean up something that you don't want to clean up. You know. Say, oh, well, we got a custodian. Oh, yeah, well, call the custodian. He's not available. Oh, oh, you know. So I call Jamie and say, Jamie, guess what? <laughs> and Jamie says, I'm not paid enough to do that. <laughs> oh, she, would, she doesn't say that. But different things in our lives, we think, well, I'm, I'm not, you know, that's not my job. You ever have that thought? That's not my job. And Jesus here is, is reminding us, he's telling us, that isn't the attitude that we ought to have. He speaks here. He encourages them to take action. To take action that he spoke of earlier in this passage. Well, what was it? It was, we just did it, washing feet. 
Now let me ask you, how many of you say, oh yeah, let me wash those feet? Anybody? Anybody just dying to wash some feet this morning? Say, please, please, Pastor Matthew, this is what I've been waiting for all day long. No, but not one of you? That just proves that you're sane. What? Oh, Sharon says she'll do it. Oh, Delmer said he would do it? Well, we all know Delmer's kind of a little, no, just a, you know. But here, and, and I shouldn't do that because, of course, if somebody, if somebody raises their hand, everybody thinks, well, Pastor's going to make you come up and do it. And I have no intent, we're not washing any more feet today so y'all can breathe a, a collective sigh of relief, you know. But in verse 14, he says, If I then, the Lord your, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Amen. Well, why wash feet? You know, you sit here going, why? What's the big deal? Well, a couple of reasons, really. First, you know, this group was just about to share uh, the Lord's Supper. They were celebrating uh, the Passover, and part of the Passover uh, was the Lord's Supper, kind of what, you know, we look at it as communion. Um, and so as they did that, unlike us, you know, when we enjoy a meal, we sit, you know, generally we sit at a table, and the, the meal is about your tummy height, right? We cut, you know, use our silverware, and da, 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 less pizza, then we just pick it up and shove it in. But for them, when they ate, what did they do? They, it says, they reclined at a low table. You know, we should try this at the covered dish right after, you know. They reclined at a low table. And so they would be down like this. You know, and so while at the table, you got the table and your feet are as far away from your food as they can be. But when we sit at a low table, our feet are right there. You know, hello feet, right? And we have to remember for them, for their feet, you know, they wore what? Sandals mostly. And their roads were what? Mostly dirt. And they shared those roads with what? Animals. And so their feet, when they would come to have their common meal together and they would be sitting at their low table, they'd be smelling the roast beef and feet. <laughs> and so we can understand why it would be a nice thing to have clean feet when you're enjoying a meal together. Right? But that's not the only reason why Jesus did this. It's not the only reason why. And we get a fascinating look into the hearts of the disciple. Yes, he washed his feet. And yes, it was a picture, too, of the way that he washes us and washes us from sin. But it also helps us to understand the hearts of the deacons. And Jesus was trying to get to that as well. Because it's about this time in the, uh, uh, the Gospel of Luke that the disciples are having a very different kind of conversation. In Luke chapter 22, the disciples prepare for the uh, Passover. The Lord's Supper is instituted. And in verse 24, we see their heart was this. In verse 24 of Luke 22, it says, Now... There was also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. Hmm. Which of them should be considered the greatest? So Jesus, yes, removing the dirt from their feet. But in light of what's going on in their heart, he wanted to clean their feet, but he also wanted to clean up their hearts, clean up their attitudes. He's saying, you think greatness is the most important thing? You think who among you is the greatest is what's really, what we should be dealing with, what you should be thinking about right now? You think that's, what important, that's what's important? You're wrong. It's not. And so then Jesus gives them this example. Because let's be honest, and I didn't have to ask the question, of the 13 of them there, who's most important? Jesus. Now let me ask you a question. Does anybody care about who's number two? No. But here they are having their little bickering. Oh, I'm most important. You know. And if we're honest, we sometimes do the same thing. But Jesus gives them this example. He sets an example for them. 
He exemplifies first humility. Let us recall that Jesus, yes, from the world's perspective, is the son of a carpenter, but who is he really? Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the anointed one. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the creator. Jesus is God. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is our Savior. He is the Word become flesh. Amen. And He's all that and more. And yet, He removes His garments, takes a basin, takes a towel, and He humbles Himself. Last week we talked about betrayal and we talked about the idea that Jesus betrayed himself. Jesus delivered himself. He handed himself over. Here we see the example of Jesus humbling himself. Our Lord, our Savior, our King, our God humbles himself. himself. And we struggle with it. And we do. Let's just be honest. We do. I do. I don't know about you many ways. I struggle being humble sometimes. Other times it's real easy, you know. And normally it's, well, if you deserve me to be humble, well, then I'll be very, very humble. If I don't think you deserve me to be humble, well, <laughs> are you there with me? And is that really humility? No. Jesus gives us that example of humility, but not just that, he also exemplifies service. He served the disciples. He served in a very humble, humble way, personally, carefully, gently cleaning the feet of those disciples, demonstrating his love for them. Now, of course, it's interesting because in light of this conversation that he has, in light of this act that he does, then we have Simon Peter, who's always a quick thinker, you know. I don't know about you, I'm sometimes a quick thinker, and it gets me in trouble, you know. Sometimes my thoughts go a little bit faster than that logical part of my brain that says, hold on, not a good idea, you know. And Simon Peter is a very quick thinker. Very often in Scripture we see it, and here we see it again. He responds to Jesus. And you can see the gears running because first they're having this conversation about who's most important. And then Jesus does this um, act of humility. So then Jesus, or Peter, you can see it. He goes, oh, wait, no. Important isn't what is in. Humility is now is what is in. So I want to be the most humble. You know? I want to be the most humble. And so he says to Jesus, I won't allow you to wash my feet. No, no, no. I don't deserve you to wash my feet. He says never, and how many of us have learned never to say never to God? <laughs> then he gets a little bit of a rebuke. And so this again, it's Peter just, I just sometimes laugh because I see so much of myself in Peter sometimes. But Peter just laughs because he goes, oh, no, no, don't, don't, you're not going to, you're not going to wash my feet. And then Jesus rebukes him slightly. And then he goes, oh, okay. And then he changes his perspective again, his position again. Not just my feet, wash my hands and my head too. And he's just sitting there going, Peter, chill out, chillax, sit down, take a minute. And Jesus says, you don't need that. Humility and service, they are what Jesus demonstrated. And these are what Jesus is referring to in verse 16. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. So the message is clear. <coughs> Jesus is saying, if I can humble myself and serve, then so too can you. Now last this morning, Jesus, he, yes, he stated it as his example. He specifies his example. And in verse 17, he reminds us that there is a blessing to those who satisfy his example. Verse 17, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Now I find it fascinating you know, I find it utterly fascinating uh, the way this conversation goes because Jesus had just talked to them, right? And he says, if you know these things. Now, that word if, it's a conditional conjunction and it demonstrates probability or possibility. You know, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But what is interesting is in this situation, there really ain't no if, is there? 
He says, do you know these things? Well, Jesus just told them. He just sit there going, you know, it's like Jesus says, I want you to do this, I want you to do this. Then he goes, now, if you know what I just told you, you know, and I sometimes sit there, God, you know, I'm sure God has said the same thing to me. Matthew, you know, you know, but he just told them. So what he's saying, I'm giving you an example. Here it is. And now he says, if you know what the example is. So really, the challenge is this. If you know this, and I know you do, then what? Do it. If you know this, and I know you do, because I just told you, sweetie, you know. If you know this, and you 12, you know, I just cleaned your feet out. If you don't hear me, I'll do your ears too, you know. If you know them, then he makes this gracious statement. If you do them, you will be blessed. If we imitate Christ's example, if we humble ourselves, if we serve each other, then we will be blessed. Blessed. Now to be blessed, we remember that that is God extending his benefits to us. Expend extending it to us and through us. <clears throat> And again, is that why we do these things? No. But it's a blessing. We are obedient because we owe our obedience to God. God deserves us to be obedient. He is our Savior, but He is our Lord. If He says jump, we say, how high? Yes. We don't say, well, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe Jim Brinkman can do it, you know, do it in my place. No. We are obedient. But he says jump, we say how high, and we try to jump that high, and then he blesses us for being obedient. And that's what he's telling us here. The towel and the basin, as we see them this morning, they're simple things. Something we all have in our homes, you know. But they remind us of the humility and the service of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. They are, a rem they are a reminder to us of the example that he has left, not just to those disciples, but to all those that follow him as their Lord and Savior. And they remind us of the blessedness that he offers as we are obedient to his call. So as we conclude our message this morning, we need to heed the words of Jesus who says, If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Now you know what? The person sitting next to you, they may not need their feet washed today. Maybe they need some encouragement. Give it to them. The person sitting behind you, they may not need their feet washed but what if they needed five dollars? Would you give it to them? The people sitting in the balcony, you know, they all need their feet washed. That's why they're required to sit in the balcony. <laughs> no, just kidding. Oh, oh, oh. You know. They may not need their feet washed. But maybe one of them just needs a friend to listen and to pray with them. The people in the overflow room. It's going to shock you. They may not need their feet washed, but they have a need. Are we going to humble ourselves and serve each other? Or do we say, I'm too good for that? No, we're not too good, because our Lord and Savior, He humbled Himself and He served, so we can too. Let's pray. Father God, we thank You for the picture of the the basin and the towel. We thank you for your graciousness in sending your son Jesus who was perfect, lived a perfect life and laid that perfect life down to pay the price for our sin. And by grace through faith, we can have a relationship with you. We pray that each and every one that is here this day knows this truth, has been introduced to Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If there are any here this morning that don't know you, Lord, 
We ask that your spirit would speak to their hearts, that you would challenge them, and maybe begin the process of them asking some questions, and we'd be happy to share with them. But for the rest of us, those that do know Christ as our Lord and Savior, Father, today we do desire to humble ourselves. You know, whatever our bank balance may be, whatever our property holdings may be, whatever our position may be in the community or in this world, Lord, we choose this day to lay that aside, recognizing that we are brothers and sisters in Christ and we are called to care for one another, to love one another, to serve one another. And we pray this day, and we pray in faith, that you would provide us with an opportunity this very week to do just that, to serve each other as a demonstration of our love for one another and for Jesus Christ our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand as we're able as we have our hymn of invitation. second part on the study of Gideon. And so we invite you to participate in that. And youth were meeting this evening and we invite you to participate in that. Uh, but do continue to pray for those going on the mission trip. Um, keep them in your prayers, not only this week as they prepare, but also the following week. But let's be dismissed with prayer. Father God, we ask that you go with us now as we go to our time of fellowship at the covered dish. We pray for those that aren't able to, to stay, that you would bless them this day as well. We pray that you'd help us to carry with us the spirit of humility and service that Jesus demonstrated for us all. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen.